What's up, guys? Hey, <laughs> three days in a row. Can you believe it? Is this a new normal for us? Feels like it. Hey, this is uh, Jay Cowell, and this is the Alliance Blog Podcast, a presentation of Alliance-Wrestling.com, your number one source for news and information for the National Wrestling Alliance. And uh, we have a fun discussion. This was taken from the Alliance Guys podcast from Thursday. We were talking about Kenzie Page. Well, actually, we were talking about the ESPN article about the top 30 out of 30. Excuse me. The top 30 under 30. Wow. Why was that so hard for me to say? The top 30 under 30 in the world of professional wrestling. Now, the list... I mean, there's some names on there that I might challenge. Of course, I, I agree with what everyone else says. MJF is more than deservedly uh, number one on that list. But there's some other names on there that I question. And we'll get into that on this uh, on this episode of the Alliance Blog podcast. Uh, as well as we kind of narrow in on Kenzie Page. Because I believe, mistakenly, somebody from ESPN must not be paying attention to the NWA. Because 100% Kenzie Page. Kenzie Page, the NWA Women's Television Champion should definitely have been on that list. And we're going to talk about the NWA Women's Division uh, even more. Um, you know, I just uh, just over the weekend, I saw my first Women of Wrestling show. And, uh, you know, I'll hold off on that for another time. Cal. That's DKM. This guy over here is Jaden. Welcome to the podcast, gentlemen. How are you today? We're not talking to you. What do I do? Oh, what? You think you have to do something for us not to want to talk to you? All right. Well, then, Jaden, are you talking to me today? Yes, even if you are a fan of uh, Nickelback, I still am talking to you. Well, hey, hold on now. Hold on now. He's a fan of Nickelback? I didn't say yeah. I was a fan. Yeah, that could ruin a person's reputation. And just like that, the last year of my life, for nothing. Look at this photograph. Look oh at this God. photograph! Please don't sing. I wasn't. I was doing my imperson- impersonation of Nickelback. Yeah, what's please don't do Nickelback. <laughs> <laughs> and please don't sing while doing Nickelback. Well, see, Poyo's got my back right there. Y'all better nickel back off of J. Cow. <laughs> Thank you, Poyo. Thank you. Why should we start now? Yeah, I, I mean, know. This is what a twenty-year tradition or something. Uh, it's yeah. like Poyo, you're fifteen years too late. Um, That's why he's so blurry. We we uh, oh no, we knocked him out of focus. Oh, right, now he went black. Oh, you know what happens when you do that? Now I don't know what the hell happened. I think you took a picture of him. I did. And that's what happened. I've heard rumors. He took a picture. I told you to look at that photograph. Well, you, would you take my picture so that I can remember? I know a different band. Anyways, uh, this is the uh, Lions Guys podcast, a presentation of lions-wrestling.com. Uh, we have a great interview in store for you later at the end of the show. Uh, yesterday, I was able to have an opportunity to speak to former NWA World Junior Heavyweight Champion Jarrell Clark. One of the things we pride ourselves here at the NWA, uh, the Alliance Guys podcast, is that we cover the NWA in a way that nobody else does because we cover the future of the NWA. I mean, we've had interviews with Silas Mason. We had interviews uh, with Kerry Morton. You know, they don't build them like they used to, according to him. But then we also cover the present NWA, and I'm talking about guys like Jack Stane, and and I'm talking about uh, Jeremiah Plunkett, and of course, you know, Poil Delmar, the manager of champions. And we we interview those from the past as well. I mean, we talked to Tim Storm. We talked to, uh, you know, most recently, Jarrell Clark. Earlier in the year, we had the uh, 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 Drew Onyx, the, the NWA British Commonwealth champion. I mean, we do the past, present, and future of the NWA like nobody else in the business. And I and I can put my stamp on that because, damn it, it's true. It's, it's damn true. 
come on, nothing, guys? Really, nothing? Oh, there's something, but uh, you know, we're trying to keep you monetized. Good night, everybody. What's happening in the world today? Hey, did you did you hear about that uh, that article from ESPN? It started making the rounds on Twitter. Uh, the top ten uh, wrestlers under thirty. There's actually a full thirty page article. I went through and read it all. Thirty page uh, article. Uh, excuse me, thirty talent, uh, thirty names on that. Not thirty page article. Excuse me, thirty. The best thirty under thirty is what the list was. Um, but if you just read what was on the uh, on ESPN, uh, excuse me, if you just read what was on that tweet that was kind of setting everything off, they only listed the the top ten. Uh, of course, if you want to get the best NWA uh, coverage in a magazine, you know there is a brand new edition of the NWA Official Wrestling uh, Magazine. It's a it's an online magazine, but it looks beautiful. It's nicely done. I, I was actually reading it before the show started. Um, you guys should check it out. Download it uh, if you like it. If you don't like it, download it anyways. It just helps the NWA get uh, more traction. And of course. Stuff like this doesn't happen unless uh, the consumers support it. So if you guys want to keep seeing uh, additional content from the NWA, and, and this is probably the best form of it because uh, it's just interviews and, and, and columns and stuff that uh, you definitely can enjoy. So, you know, I heard that the incredibly talented, wonderful, amazing editor decided to use the term Murdox that um, I coined on this alliance-wrestling.com and the Alliance Guys podcast. So I like the fact that the awesome, amazing editor decided to put that in there. I just wish they would give Dangerous Adrenalist and Gladiators and maybe myself, but more like Dog a little plug on that. Hint, hint, nudge, nudge. <laughs> how, do you, how do you feel, Mr. Jaden? I'm not sure I'm fully getting your, your point. I just think maybe, you know, since the frame Murdoch's was coined here on the Alliance Guys podcast, your number one source of news of the NWA, maybe that uh, maybe we should just you know have a little mention of, of uh, South Jersey's number one wrestling promotion, Dangerous Adrenaline Wrestling Gladiators, and their upcoming event on Friday night, October 6th in Glassburg, New Jersey for Pause for the Cause or something like that. It's not. It's not a rustic New Jersey, though. It's just the regular. New no, Jersey, it's right? no. It's a. It's a nice part. I've been to Glassboro. It wasn't a bad town, actually. No, no, no. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Nice part, New Jersey. New Jersey's beautiful. If you go everywhere, everywhere, like in South Jersey, once you go in North Jersey, you, that's that's where the dump is. That's where you done messed up, son. Well. That's why Smashing Pumpkins is going to be playing in North Jersey and not where, you know, in South Jersey because they want to play in the dump. So there, there you go, Jane. <laughs> Doggone it. I like that, though. Anyways, um, uh, Jaden is good enough of a shield to be a NASCAR driver. Much respect. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the funny thing is, if when you go to South Jersey, when you go to, to uh, Glassboro and you're at one of those dangerous adrenaline wrestling gladiators, what you don't understand is that you won't see Jaden unless you see the guy wearing the shirt with all the sponsorship signs on it. Then you know you're talking to Jaden. Anyone else is a cheap imitation. That's why I keep putting on weight so I can sell more sponsorships. <laughs> yeah, that yeah me too. Um, uh, you know, I was listening to another podcast today. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But I was just so surprised how many. Oh, there goes the camera. I was surprised by how many sponsors that they had on that particular podcast. And I was like, you know what? Maybe, maybe this this podcast needs to go find some sponsors. So uh, just don't go through Cast Media. I heard about that. What happened to Cast Media? What what's what's that? What's going on there? They uh, apparently are trying to sell to. Uh, another company, like I forget what it's something one, but the director apparently is owes a bunch of people a whole lot of money, allegedly, including some big time wrestling podcasts. Uh -oh. And also, they con their way into something like a 60 40 split where they get 60% of the profits, and then also they kind of have to run through other stuff too, like run through their website, run through them, and they kind of own peace and stuff like that. And there's a lot of money being 
not paid for while they're while the owner of cast media is uh live talking about his new multi-million dollar house and vacations with his trophy wife oh wow wow uh that's uh that's crazy man and i guess that's why like uh you know a lot of the wrestling personalities kind of converged on with what uh, conrad's doing because you know uh you get some uh, credibility with him. He's been doing it for such a long time now and, and has such a cult-like following. Um, but getting back to this list that ESPN wrote that I thought was kind of interesting because they did mention the top 10 wrestlers. Like I said, there is a 30 under 30 list, but I'm going to hit the top 10 first just to kind of give you an idea where that list is at. Uh, the number one overall was MJF from AEW, Rhea Ripley from the WWE uh, Theory. I guess they forgot the Austin again. Uh, also from the WWE, Vikingo is your number four from AAA and AEW. Uh, Dom Mysterio, WWE. Braun Breaker, WWE. Takashita from AEW. But before that, DDT. Um, that was kind of an interesting name on the list. Liv Morgan from the WWE. And it closes out with Logan Paul. Uh, just when you hear that list, uh, Jaden, tell me, man, what, what does that invoke to you? You're... You're obviously involved in the wrestling community. You you know some of these talents that are out here that are under thirty. Are, are there names on that top ten list that you could uh, you could easily swap out with somebody else? Well, I know for a fact that they don't. They need to make a ESPN list between forty and seventy because then the NWA wrestlers could be on that list. Ooh. There's nobody. Uh, yeah, there's nobody seventy in the NWA. I had to think real quick. Between forty and seventy. All right. DK There's something Ricky. close enough. <laughs> and isn't Ricky 70? No, he's close, though. He is. Um, I, I don't know exactly how old Ricky is. I don't think he's history is how old Ricky is. We, we talk about his age almost every other podcast. But I don't pay attention. <laughs> um, he was born in 56. Um, so do the date real quick. 56. He's 66. Okay, there you go. So, um, yeah, I mean, he is the elder statement in the uh, NWA. Oh, there it is. Boy, we got it. He is the elder statement in the uh, NWA, but he, he's not 70. Okay. That would be true if Austin Idol wasn't there. There you go. Um, DK, like, I know that you kind of, uh, from afar, follow what's happening in the world of pro wrestling. What do you think of that list? Is MJF really the top 10? Is he the number one guy under 30 right now in the world of wrestling? If you're just looking at potential, yes. I would say yes. Uh, the only thing he's got going against him is size. He's just not that big. But talent, charisma, ability to work a crowd. I mean, he's a throwback. Yeah. And uh, he he does all the things that they did back in the old days that people say, you know, that if you want that type of stuff, you're you're living in the you know past and you're not in tomorrow. No, I mean, you look at MJF. He's he's basically the epitome of a throwback wrestler uh, and probably has the brightest future you know, of any wrestler right now. Uh, you know, part, part of his gimmick is he talks about when his contract's up at the end of this year, I think. Or the 2024. Year, yeah, yeah. That, you know, he's going to start a bidding war with WWE. And let me tell you, that's probably not a joke. No, I don't, I don't <laughs> think it is. Every I mean, that, that's probably more than just a gimmick. I'm sure he's going to be listening to what they have to, what they have to offer. And not to get too off topic, but the uh, the elite recently re-signed with AEW. So um, smart move by them. Yeah, I don't. Again, that's another conversation for another time. Uh, but DK, w when I go through the list, is there anyone on there that you think shouldn't be on that top ten list? I mean, they've got Logan Paul. Who wrestles maybe three matches a year at this point? Uh, live and draws more. more people and gets more attention. It probably makes more money than all the rest of them combined. Just all of those prime sales. What do you think? I and as a natural, I don't disagree with you at all. But I'm trying to make controversy. 
The all right, Fred. <laughs> this is going to be a little bit controversial. Let's hear it. In this day, I think it's too early to put Dominic Mysterio in. The, yeah, I, guy in the list. I mean, they bring him in at five. Yes, he's gotten probably the biggest reactions in WWE these days, especially the, you know, booing and all that stuff. And you know, the fa the fans hate him. He's the perfect Tully Blanchard style hill people people will pay money to watch him get beat up and uh and everything but man so so early in a career when so many things can happen fans are fickle they burn out fast that's true you know they you can be you know that's what they're worried about with la night is that right now he's very over in wwe and they go Will WWE start pushing them before, you know, before it fades? Uh, let's remember that uh, Mustafa Ali at one time was in that situation. And then, unfortunately, got injured, and Kofi Kingston's the one that ended up taking over. Yeah. And Kofi's another one. I mean, when he got hot, he was hot. He burned bright. By the time he lost the title, nobody cared. And, you know, there, people were upset by how quickly he lost it. But in general, they, didn't, they weren't upset that he lost it. Yeah. Just the just the manner in which it happened. And, you know, nobody's pushed for a second Kofi reign. And so, I, I, I mean, should he be on the list? Maybe. Should he be in the top ten? Probably not. Should he be at number five? Definitely not. Uh, again, Logan Paul, does he a committed wrestler? I don't know. Does he draw more money? Uh, honestly, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, you know, he certainly has his, his group of fans, but he's another one who I think uh, – if you used him too much, he would probably burn out quickly. And so then the question goes, if you can only use him occasionally, does he really need to be, you know, ranked so high? You know, there are a lot of factors to take in determination. I don't know El Hayo Del Vicino, so I can't really comment on him. Austin's That's a Spanish name, and the Spanish and the Mexican screwed it up. You know I do that on purpose, right? Anyway, Austin Theory. I don't know. He's not as big as he was, but he certainly has the potential to become a star. I think Austin Theory is a perfect example of what you were just talking about. Uh, the fans getting fickle and, and not not necessarily churning on him, but not appreciating him, I guess is the word, like they did a year ago. You know, when, when he was kind of climbing into it, uh, he he would get some pretty decent reactions. And I feel like those have kind of fell a little silent. Well, that fell silent as soon as he became the heir apparent to Vince McMahon, one of his pro projects. As soon yeah, as he left NXT, basically. It was almost the worst thing that ever could have happened with him was being associated with Vince. Sure. And then again, you know, they kind of pushed him into the U.S. title real quickly again as part of being Vince and overexposed him a little bit. Uh, can he go away and come back up? Sure. I mean, I think he has the potential. Uh, but rank him higher than uh, Braun Breaker or Rex Steiner or whatever you want to call him. He's not a Steiner anymore. He definitely won't be a Steiner anymore. <laughs> nope. Nope. Jesus. Uh, no chance now. Uh, Carmelo Hayes. Uh, other people like him better than I do, but certainly someone to keep an eye on. Hayes is on the list uh, when you get to the 30. Can I go through the rest of the list? Do you want to hear it? Sure. So um, this the next one, number 11, I don't, I'm not familiar with them, but uh, Julia from Stardom. I, I don't, I'm sorry, I don't know that person. Uh, then you've got Butch from the WWE. You've got Jack Perry, the former Jungle Boy from AEW. Wesley from the WWE. Um, I'm going to try on this one. Utami Hashihishita. From Stardom, hope I said that right. Uh, at number sixteen, Tony Storm AEW. Number seventeen, Dragon Lee from the WWE. 
Number 18 is Bandito, AEW. 19, Jamie Hayter. 20, Wheeler Yuta. 21, um, again, I'm going to butcher it, but I'll try my best. Kaito Kaiomiya from Noah. And then 22, another stardom um, wrestler, Saya Kamitani. 23, Yoda Tsuyi from New Japan. I think I said that right. This one was the first one that was a free agent was Jordan Grace was listed at number four, uh, number 24, excuse me. Uh, Deanna Perrazzo, number 25 from Impact, the only Impact, or uh, one of only two Impact names on this list. Then uh, number 26, I, I don't know this person's name. I think he's part of the uh, Imperium uh, Dragon. Yeah. He, he feuded with Walter. Yeah, he's talented. If he was a little taller, he'd be a big star. Number yeah. 20. Number 27, uh, Masa Slamovich from Impact. 28, uh, Tyler Bate. 29, Daniel Garcia from the AEW. And then number 30, um, Shitoi Yumino from New Japan Pro Wrestling. Uh, yeah, Tyler Bate, he's a true master. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know what's funny is locally we have Tyler Bateman. So every time I hear Tyler Bate, I'm like, who came first? Tyler Bateman or Tyler Bate? Well, yeah, everybody knows California likes to make up uh, versions of people like they have the fake Biggie Bigs. It's one guy out of like a million, dude. <laughs> you know, you know, one thing when you look on this list, I mean, obviously for a mainstream thing like, you know, ESPN, they're trying to hit what they think are the big things. Yeah. Uh, too many starting people on here. I don't think stardom is as big as people think it is. And I'm not trying to downplay it, but it's like, it, it, it is a very, uh, it's a very niche promotion and it's a, it's an all women's promotion, which in and of itself, that's, it's not a death sentence or anything. It's a, it's a very popular promotion among that audience. And, and the, the people who love stardom are diehard stardom fans. I don't think they're on the fence about it, but like, you know, as somebody who lives in the United States, that's not even like an option for me to watch stardom. It's not something that like ever crosses my mind. No. And I just, again, I don't know. You know, let's remember most wrestling sports entertainment fans are WWE fans. Sure. I mean, and about, half that number will follow AEW. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, we see those numbers pretty much every week when they talk. Yeah. Radio. Um, yeah. Which is where I'm getting from. So, you know, you're, so when you start getting past that, especially in the U S I mean, uh, I don't know that some of these people will, especially the stardom ones will ever be anything in the United States. They might come wrestle here for one of the promotions, but get over. I question. And, uh, I, you know, it's, it's a nice thing to do. Honestly, if I were them, I probably would have looked at, I probably would have looked at more U S based, "Quote unquote super indies," then I would have. Yeah, that's what happens when a a basement dwelling mark is writing for ESPN. That's all I'm saying. Well, one of the things that blew my mind, right, and and I know I'm I'm biased, but Chris Bay, who works in Impact, has also been spending a lot of time in the indies in Southern California on the West Coast. Um, that guy is is phenomenal, and he didn't even sniff the top thirty. I mean, he's better than Wheeler Yuta. He's better than uh. Uh, a lot of the names that are on this list, as far as I'm concerned, in marketability, he's he's representing the Bullet Club. And I know that doesn't mean as much as it did 10 years ago, but he's representing the Bullet Club and Impact Wrestling. That I mean, that's got to carry some weight, right? Yeah. You know, look, this article was written. It's The line is by two different people who I've never heard of, uh, which, I mean, I haven't heard of most people, so that in and of itself isn't. A big deal but you know recently oh, right. dave, dave Meltzer was on a was you know doing an interview and the guy was talking to him about star ratings and you know like how many star ratings kenny omega has got compared to like 
you know, some of the other people, other things. And the guy basically just came out and said, I mean, he was, he was respectful. He basically came out and said that Dave star ratings are just Dave's opinion. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's no science to it. There's no, you know, there's no gathering information from a cross the spectrum or whatever. It's, it's Dave's opinion and Dave rates higher things he likes and people he likes and everything like that. And that's true. And, you know, that's the thing with these lists. I mean, you or I or Jaden could sit together or separately and come up with a list of top 30 wrestlers under 30. And they might look nothing alike. Um, you know, one thing that I, I, I kind of had a flashback to when we were talking about this is, um, and you guys might remember, our longtime listeners could remember about 11 years ago, uh, the trio of us spoke to Frank Cuerda of Pro Wrestling Illustrated. Cruda. Uh, say it again. Cruda. Cruda. Why is that so hard for me to say? It looks like Cuerda to me. Anyways. You want uh, to put an extra N in there somewhere. No, there was no extra N, just a really solid W. So Frank Cruda, uh, he like came on this show and specifically said, Hey, the reason why Scorpio Sky isn't on the cover of our magazines, but John Cena is, is because John Cena sells magazines and Scorpio Sky doesn't. Now, again, that was also 11 years ago. You know, now you can get your very own Scorpio Sky action figure from AEW, but uh, uh, that remains to be the same. I think a lot of these lists are literally mated, uh, written for controversy, for the dialogue, because now we're talking about it. It's giving... ESPN, even though like we don't agree with this list, it kind of gives them a little bit more credibility. Now people are seeking that article out. Hell, I went and found the article based on the top 10 because I thought, wow, they didn't even list a single NWA individual. And, and here we are talking about it and, and starting under to- 30, Jay. Only Poyo is under 30 in that company. No, no, that's not true because look, we've got, uh, I, I have several names here. Well, well look, I, I'll tell you one that I would have put on there from the NWA. Well, let's. I'll hear your name in a minute. Let me just go through the list of guys and gals that I know that are under 30, right? And these are people who have prominent positions in the NWA currently. So I'm talking about Kerry Morton, your world junior heavyweight champion. He's 22 years old. You've got uh, Alex Taylor, who, who's 29. I mean, he's he's almost almost off the list because of age. Uh, Misa K and Maddie Rinkowski, M95, both of them are under 30. They're the women's tag team champions. Joe Alonzo is only 26. And I mean, uh, you know, uh, Camille, she just turned, uh, she turned 30 last year. Like she, she would have been my uh, right there. And then uh, Poyo says, uh, you know, really pretty empowered. I think as a collective, I don't think either, any of them are under the age of 30, but uh, Kenzie Page. You LNB, think they're under the age of 30. What's that? You think they're all under the age of 30. I think, yeah, I think all of Pretty Empowered is under 30. Yeah. You, you didn't say it that way. What yeah. did I say? Over. You didn't think any oh. of them were under 30. My apologies to those fine ladies, those fine young ladies. I don't think any of them are over 30. So uh, people who go to the 75th with Jay, make sure you form a circle around him so that they don't beat the crap out of him. First of all, I'll have you know that I'm friends with, uh, you know, the most important Pretty Empowered. I mean, look at that. Look how happy they are to take that picture with me. One's making a stink face. Are, are, are you sure? Are you sure they're happy to be taking the picture with you or the, you know, shush. cat flipped them? Shush. <laughs> oh, I'm oh, sorry. I'm a big Ella oh. Envy fan, and she's, and I think, I want to believe she's a big J. Cal fan. We'll just leave it at that. Well, you believe that. <laughs> also, real quick, guys, uh, this is what happens when you your budget makes you fire your staff writers. You get a bunch of people who, who freelance and write crap like that for ESPN. ESPN, Sports Illustrated, all those magazines are no longer what they used to be. Well, yeah. especially the online versions. Especially the online versions. Because basically, you can submit stuff to them, and if they like it, they'll do something. I mean, you can tell a lot of them are not edited. <laughs> um. Luthes has a good quote here. Cornette has said, counting the money made is the only way to keep score in pro wrestling. I think that's that's, that's true. Uh, but, you know, getting back to Miss Kenzie Page, and I know that Poyo kind of put the spotlight on her by saying Kenzie Page, period. I think I don't want to hear about her, period. 
Well, you see, that's why I wanted to say who I was going to put because I knew that everybody else would bring her up first. But yeah, Kenzie Page certainly <coughs> probably my top one from the NWA. That <coughs> excuse me, I'm on the list. I have to go get a drink. Sure. I'm all I that. wonder since we can't tell they're wearing a mask. I wonder if both blunt force trauma are under thirty. Um. <laughs> <laughs> And and Poyo, I mean, we get it. I'm actually thrilled that you are working with Pro Wrestling Illustrated. I think I might have said to you in the past that that's something that I wanted to pursue at at one point as well. But that doesn't change the fact that they're, I mean, you know. So these lists sometimes come up just for the whole distinction to have people talk about them. And uh, it is what it is. (laughs) Don't die, DKM. DKM is hacking up a fur ball. Uh, Poor Poor DKM. It's, the original grumpy back. cat. He is the original grumpy cat, and he's back at, at the desk. It looks like he's alive. That might be cat camp for a while. It's kind of the way it feels. Um, but, like, getting back to Kenzie Page, like, there's some – oh, this just handed to you. Dinner. What is it? It's a hot dog. All right. I was hoping it was a roast beef sandwich for some reason. I don't, I'm no, worried. I had a roast beef sandwich two days ago. You know they sell roast beef sandwiches now at Costco. I I almost bought one today and I, I didn't pull the trigger. Why not? Why not? Uh, just because I I was in a rush. Um. Oh, what a rush! Yeah, right. When you come back to New Jersey, now I'm taking you to Peterson's. And we're going to get you a cheese steak or a chicken cutlet on a on a Philly pretzel with uh, mozzarella squares on it. Yeah, just no. Uh, uh, what was it? Uh, was it the provolone that I didn't like, or was it the uh, the pepper jack didn't like you? I think. Yeah, something like that. All right, so let's let's talk a little bit more about Kenzie Page because clearly uh, there is a spotlight forming along this young lady. I mean, you're seeing her uh, wrestling every weekend. Uh, I I love seeing the NWA posters that are out there. Excuse me. You're seeing event posters for other promotions, but now you're seeing that NWA logo underneath the talent that's signed by the NWA. I love that. I think it's, I think it's cool. I think it helps establish the NWA, kind of give it some credibility. Like, Hey, this superstar that you're going to see this weekend at this wrestling show. Yeah. They're part of our family. They're, they're our product. And you're watching them this weekend here at, you know, Joe's wrestling promotion, but in reality, they are an NWA talent. I think that's kind of cool, and it kind of helps distinguish the NWA as a bigger deal. <laughs> okay, Luthez popped me on that one. Thursdays, it's a ham sandwich days. Yeah, I guess so. Um, but anyways, uh, as we as we continue to just... Dis- oh, did my, I thought my monitor just went out. Oh, thank God it didn't. Uh, as we continue to discuss uh, Kenzie Page... Her being a former tag team champion and now currently the women's television champion, you could look no further than a, a growing star within the NWA. I think she's all of about 22 years old, maybe 23. I, I don't know exactly how old she is. Uh, but she is certainly a lightning rod for the NWA and that women's division. You know, Jaden, I know that you are a fan of uh, some of the women's wrestling that, that's out there. How does Kenzie Page measure up with some of the other female talent that you that you're scouting for dog? Uh, I like Kenzie Page. I like the, all three of the um, pretty empowered. Honestly, they all have something special and unique. Four, true, uh, but I like three of them. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but they all have something special. They all have something unique, and they have some marketability. And now we just need somebody who knows what they're doing to truly, truly capitalize. Maybe, uh, maybe uh, Poyo should start. A company and push them to the moon. DK, I know that uh, we've talked about this online, offline, you know, especially the dynamic between Kenzie and Ella Envy. Like it was such a refreshing tag team, something new. It, it, the concept itself isn't new, but uh, the application that's going on in the NWA is, is something different than what we had for the last five years. What do you think of? Uh, Ella Envy, Kenzie Page, and Pretty Empowered in general. Uh, I I like them, but you certainly see the separation now. And uh, 
there's there's separation between Kenzie Page and the other three, even if one of them's her sister. And and maybe part of it she's just been around in the NWA longer. Uh, but she's certainly hitting her stride. She certainly has. <laughs> I need to say this about a pretty empowered person, but she certainly matured well in the last few years as far as her in-ring ability, her promo ability, her ability to be the character to the point where you're going, well, is it a character or is this Kenzie Page? God, I hate the word character. Well, I know you do, but... Gimmick! For the for, for the marks! <laughs> By the way, kind of like when people use the word ignorant wrong. By the way, I just looked it up. Kenzie Page was born in 2002. Yeah, yeah. well, you two were born last century. You're older than me. Don't forget that, my friend. It's what, four months? Yeah, whatever. It's four months I'm going to (laughs) take and celebrate. (laughs) Shut up. Respect your elders, youngin. I, in 2002, I was at Angels Stadium during the World Series and got to see in 2002 the Angels win a World Series ring. And she wasn't even born yet. Uh, actually, she might have been born because uh, her birth date was March 5th. So, yeah, she would have been a few months old while I was watching the Angels win a World Series. Uh, Kylie is 19. I don't know how old Ella Envy is or uh, – I forget the other girl's name. Uh, Roxy. Roxy. I uh, I don't know how old either of them are, but I I don't uh, I don't feel like they're very old. But putting that focus back on Kenzie Page, uh, much to what Poyo said in the chat, like uh, anyone uh, who questions her ability in the ring should watch the match she had with Angelina Love. Uh, there was a lot of in ring ability and intelligence in the in that matchup. What I liked about it uh, was that it seems like. You know, looking back when Kenzie debuted in the NWA, and, and I even tweeted this, Poyo saw it, um, I wasn't a fan. I thought, like, oh, this isn't she, – she's no big deal. And, you know, but she's really put in the work. You can see her commitment to – like, she's changed her body shape. She's probably in the best shape of her life right now. She goes out there and has these compelling storylines, these compelling matches. Uh, you know, she, she – I, I feel like – she is the future of the NWA, at least as far as their women's division. And as we see with Camille, who seems to be the driving force of the NWA, as far as I'm concerned, wouldn't be surprised if at some point Kenzie Page uh, becomes that women's world champion and helps carry that brand going forward. Is that is that what you see too, DK? Uh, yeah, I certainly think she's capable of it. And uh, I, I'm curious as to some thoughts out there. Uh you know she's been t she's the tv champion she's the first woman's tv champion uh i don't remember what angelina love was as far as number of title defenses but she's got to be getting close to the seven and so i mean you know how do you out there in comment land you know, feel about her title reign so far. I mean, and, you know, should should she make the lucky seven? Should she not make the lucky seven? Is there somebody out there, you know, if you don't think she should make the lucky seven, who would be a good person to, to end her reign? I mean, I don't, she's perfect where she is. And fortunately, the TV title with its rule, I mean, obviously she can go past seven title offenses and just keep it. But the obvious thing is that, you know, anybody, once they got there, would want a shot at the world championship. But it's just one shot at the world championship. There's no guarantee, you know, of rematches or anything like that. So I would hate for her to get to seven, cash in, face Camille, and... And I'll be honest, shes I don't think she's ready to be the star, the face of the women's division. Uh, so, 
but I'm very happy with her where she is. It almost makes me wish they had done the, a women's national title instead of a women's TV title. Um, so Kenzie wins the title uh, at the 312 pay per view in Highland Park uh, by defeating Max the Impaler uh, in, in that uh, decision match for the title of the tournament. Uh, then she would go on to wrestle Sierra. Gets a victory there. She would wrestle her friend, Ella Envy, in a competitive match. It wasn't like a finger poke of doom. It was a real wrestling match that Kenzie edged her her best friend, Ella, her sister, Ella. Uh, then she takes the title to Australia as part of the World of the Vampire Tour um, and loses to Cherry Stevens by disqualification. But because it was a successful uh, retention, she still got a credit for the Lucky Seven. Uh, then she defeated... You okay? Yeah. Uh, then she defeated Ruthie J at the um, at the Crockett Cup pre-show. Uh, or excuse me, she lost to Ruthie J, but again, it was by disqualification. So she still advances in that lucky seven. Uh, then by uh, reaching the draw with Angelina Love, um, she advances. Oh, and then also earlier in the uh, the season of Power, she defeated Samantha Starr. So she's at six victories right now, and uh, she will be as part of the World as a Vampire tour that's uh, happening. Right now, I mean, those matches will happen later this month, leading up to the 75th anniversary show. Uh, but she has had uh, quite a few uh, victories in that lucky seven. And, and like Poyo said here, I believe that lucky seven could be reached with a victory at seven, uh, NWA 75. So, uh, and then uh, the other part of your question, DK, was who should beat her for that? Now, our pal, what would Luthez say? Well, or should anybody beat her? Okay. Luthes says Markova would be a good transition between the two. Do you mean a transition between the women, between Camille, Camille and Kenzie? And Kenzie? So I guess that would be the vote that uh, 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 Kenzie doesn't lose the title. Now, you know, the NWA just announced another name that, that will be appearing at the 75th anniversary show. Somebody who we hadn't heard before. Um, and I thought I had a graphic, but I guess I don't. And that would be um, Miss... Uh, Allison K. And the thing about Allison K uh, is that when Allison K uh, was in the NWA, I thought she was going to be that team champion. I thought she was going to be the one to win the tournament. She'll be a part of the Burke Invitational uh, Gauntlet. So that means on night one, she'll be busy uh, trying to vie for an opportunity to challenge Camille for the second night. But if she comes up short on night one, uh, she could potentially be the challenger for night two. Uh, I just Poyo's, realized something. What's that? Uh, all but one of Pretty Empowered is too old to date Leonardo DiCaprio. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, alrighty then. So with the possibility of number seven coming at 75, we could potentially see a third title defense for Camille and her lose the title and still look strong. I mean, there are so many different options, right? Because she is supposed to, uh, she's supposed to um, have that. Uh, she's defending on night one against Markova, and then she defends on night two if she's successful against the winner of the Burke Invitational, and then uh, there could be another uh, Lucky Seven challenge. Or was there anyone still left in the championship series that had a women's title match? I mean, was it La Rosa Negra? Uh, didn't she have another opportunity for that title? Well, I don't remember. That's been so long, and I don't even remember who was on the winning team this year because they did so many. It was Team Rock and Roll, but I don't remember if La Ro I don't remember if La Rosa Negra was on that team. Yeah, I I just don't remember. So now I'm gonna look while you guys discuss uh, how great Kenzie Page is. I thought we just did that. But, hey, to do a quick segue, so we saw Allison Kay's coming back. Yeah. And, of course, she's only had one match with Camille, which was like a 10-minute time limit draw or something. Wasn't it two? I swear I remember two matches. Who? Allison Kay and Camille. Um, I'll look that up next. One was early, one was re more recent. Well, I know the most recent one was uh, 
I know the most re- La Rosa versus Camila at three three one two. Okay, so that okay, yeah, that's probably yeah. the match then. Uh, I only remember I only remember the one as far as them being one on one. Talking about Camille and Allison K. Right. So they they they, they uh they had a, a singles match uh for the title uh on an episode of Power that went to a time limit draw, and then they faced off again in a tag team match. Remember when Kylan King was kind of being like a, a Camille's keeper almost, like she was the gatekeeper to get to Camille. You had to go through Kylan King, right. and uh, they tag teamed against the Hex and won. And so, you sure there wasn't an early match like before they won the tag belts? That's like it. before Allison K left to go to Ring of Honor. So, so before they won the tag belts, uh, Marty Bell and Allison K weren't really around. You know, they they, they kind of they made their comeback for the Pretty Empowered uh, show, and that was around the time when Camille kind of became uh, the one time right. That's when she she became the Brick House that would win the Women's World Championship. Uh, they they te- like she had that one match uh, on television that they had recorded before the pandemic. And then when she came back, she had one match against Heather Monroe on primetime live. And then when the season of power started, she kind of made her march towards uh, 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 Thunder Rosa and the Women's World Championship. And once she won it, then she, def- uh, or, I'm sorry, uh, she wasn't going for um, Thunder Rosa. She was going for, um, oh, what's her name? Um, Help me out. She's in AEW. Deeb. Who? What, uh, maybe I've lost. What's the question you're asking? Who did Camille beat for the Women's World Championship? Uh, something Deeb. I can't remember her first name. Serena Deeb. There you go. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah there we go. Okay. Ali, Camille's. One of Camille's earliest challengers for the belt was uh, Kenzie Page. Yeah, it seemed like they were married for a short time. Every every title defense she had was against Kenzie Page. It happened at the Gathering uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina, before the seventy third anniversary pay per view, and then I think it happened on an episode of Power. And uh, yeah, it was, it was kind of a regular thing for a while. Here's something interesting. She defended against Christy James. I'd forgotten about that. Uh, was that in an NWA ring or no? It was a, uh, for Coastal. River... Where for Coastal? Okay, um, I'm gonna get to some more comments too. Um, Mandy says hello. I definitely agree about Kenzie. Great wrestler and isn't afraid to get in the audience face, which I also love to see. Uh, Dave Scooby reminded us La Rosa versus Camille was at three one two. Hoyle reminds us that Kenzie versus, excuse me, Camille versus Markova is night one, and the winner of the Burke Invitational gets a shot at night two. Hoyle also had Serena Deep ready in her pocket. Luthez says, would really like to see Deep back in an NWA ring. I, I think Serena Deep was extremely talented, but I don't think we're going to see very many AEW stars transition backwards into the NWA. And then Poyo says, to kind of point a reference, it was Allison K who won the title at uh, the Crockett Cup 2019, and then Thunder Rosa defeating her on an episode. I think it was on Power when she won the title. Might have been the Hard Times pay per view. It was one. I think it was the pay per view because they had a rematch at Power, and that was and and that was when they were still filming their pay per views in the Georgia Public Broadcasting Studio. So it kind of all blends together. Then of course uh, Thunder Rosa lost to Serena uh, in AEW. And then, uh, and then Camille would come and take that title from Serena. At uh, what? That wasn't uh, that wasn't Empower. That was a pay per view before Empower. Yeah, I don't remember. And then Poyo says Power Trip in Oak Grove, Kentucky was a Camille versus Kenzie match, and the night Kenzie got signed. And then also Lou said Luthes said, "Is she even in AEW anymore?" I, I know she got injured. I know she was out for a while. And I know that she uh, she was a coach, not so much as a wrestler anymore. Yeah, but still she, she was actually hired by AEW as a coach. And then they 
put her in the ring with the uh, Thunder Rosa, and she kind of got over. No, they they wrestled their first match. Thunder Rosa and and uh, Serena Deep wrestled in uh, on um, the uh, Prime Time Live. Dave Marquez's oh. promotion. That was their first match, and she sure. and Serena Deep was definitely hired to be a wrestler for uh, AEW because she had just come off being a coach for the uh, Performance Center with the WWE. So she was going a different route with AEW. Well, I know she was coaching from the beginning too. Hmm. Because they they actually made a deal about her being one of their coaches. So okay. Well, and so that I mean, let's be honest, AEW isn't known for their great booking of the women's division. In <laughs> fact, I I would say the NWA runs their women's division better than AEW does, but then almost everybody runs their women's division better than AEW does. That's like being the nicest guy in prison. Yeah, I don't know. Um, What's wrong with being the nicest guy in prison? No, but nothing. You did a real good job there. Of course, with that women's division growing in the NWA, uh, you know, we have some new names that are announced for the 75th anniversary uh, with regards to the Burke Invitational. Uh, obviously, we mentioned Alice and Kate during the, the podcast. Uh, I said Alice and Kate. Alice and Kay. Uh, also, WOAD will be there. And I'm sure there will be more names that we'll be discussing soon on an upcoming episode of this podcast. Of course, the Alliance guys will be in St. Louis for the 75th anniversary show. We'll be doing some live recording there. We'll be talking to anyone that will talk to us, really. Uh, I hope you guys will be in St. Louis uh, as part of the uh, festivities of the 75th anniversary show. Uh, we're having the first official Alliance, well, technically, it's the second official Alliance Wrestling Summit. We did one earlier this year with the Dangerous Adrenaline Wrestling Gladiators. Uh, you know, I got to meet Tim for the first time. Got to, I've met Dave Scooby before. Got to meet the Reluchador as well. And, uh, you know, a lot, of, uh, a lot of you guys will be with us in St. Louis. And we'll be uh, hashtagging that we are the Alliance while we're out there. Uh, it's going to be a good time. We're going to be sitting front row. So if you don't attend the event live you could probably watch it on pay-per-view and look for those uh uh infamous alliance logos uh well we have something special but anyways uh thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time at the matches thanks for joining the stream this has been a presentation of alliance-wrestling.com we genuinely appreciate your support would you consider subscribing so you'll never miss a future episode i'd also like to remind you we do a live stream every tuesday at 5 p.m for nwa power you can find us on social media at The Alliance Blog. And until next time, we are The Alliance.